It's time to talk about my top 10 books of 2021. This is a very exciting time each year because I love to wrap up all the books that I read in the year and figure out just which ones made my top 10. Before I get into the rest of the video, I did want to take a quick second to talk to, talk to you guys about some products that I was sent to try. So the brand is Dossier, which is a small French-based company, and they make perfumes for a fraction of the price as designer brands, and each like scent is based off of a popular designer high-end perfume so they sent me two scents and a candle so i'm just gonna open it up clearly it's like sad you can't share scent over a video but i will let you know my reactions so it says love at first match that's so cute and this candle scent is this what the looks like gourmand white flower which is inspired by victor and rolf flower bomb perfume mm, i love it it's like very florally with a hint of muskiness and it tells you on here like what the top middle and base notes are which i don't know too much about candles and stuff but and perfumes but it's nice to to feel like i do because i can be like oh the top note is this but the base note is this okay i also got some perfumes so they have like really nice simple minimalist packaging so this one is woody hyacinth and it is inspired by chanel chance you de perfume oh it's very good it's like clean but with a hint of flowers i quite like that it's not too strong either and the last one that i have to unbox for you guys today is floral violet which is in Inspired by Marc Jacobs' Daisy. Oh yeah, I love this one. It's like top notes of watermelon, strawberry. So it's like very citrusy and like flowery and I adore this scent. I've always been wanting to get more into perfumes but not really knowing where to start. So this is a great site for you guys to go check out. And I have a discount code that I will link down below in my bio. And you guys can go get a discount and enjoy smelling nice this year i read more than like any other year ever i read 150 books which is insane if you ask me i don't know how i did it i guess i just read a lot more like shorter romance books but regardless i'm going to wrap up every single one that i read this year just by like listing out the books not by wrapping up every single one with like a rating and whatnot but this is a tradition that i do on my channel when I make these videos, so I shall list off all 150 titles now and then we can get into what my top 10 were. Promise Neverland Volume 1, Flames of Chaos by Amelia Hutchins, These Violent Lights by Chloe Gong, A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Mass, Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab, Ashes of Chaos by Amelia Hutchins, The Starless Sea by Erin Morganson, A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Mass, White Hot Kiss by Jennifer L. Armantrout, Stone Cold Touch by Jennifer L. Armantrout, Every Last Breath by Jennifer L. Armantrout, Bittersweet Love by Jennifer L. Armantrout, Serpent and Dove by Shelley Marin, Blood and Honey by Shelby Marin, A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass, Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert, The Promise Neverland Volume 2, Phoenix Flame by Sarah Holland, Queen of Empire by H.R. Moore, The Initiation by Nikki Sloan, The Obsession by Nikki Sloan, The Deception by Nikki Sloan, The Redemption by Nikki Sloan, The Promise Neverland Volume 3, Victory is Greater Than Death by Charlie Jane Anders, To Love and to Loathe by Martha Walt, Waters, Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne, Deadly Dreams by K.J. Sutton, The Bridge Kingdom by Daniel L. Jensen, The Traitor Queen by Daniel L. Jensen, The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren, Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas, <sighs> I'm running out of breath, <laughs> Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare, Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare, Yon of the Dawn Volume 6, The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson, Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee, A War of the Opponent by Katie Robert, Shadow on Bone by Lee Bardugo, Twisted Love by Anna Huang, the Crown of Guild of Bones by Jennifer L. Armantrout. Black Sunshine by Karina Hale. Abel by Katie Robert. Keeper of the Lost City Everblaze by Shannon Messenger. Yon of the Dawn, Volume 7. The Secret Bridesmaid by Katie Burchill. Keepers of the Lost City Never Seen by Shannon Messenger. Heartstopper, Volume 1 by Alice Oz. Raf Sadek by Laura Thalassa. A Strange Hymn by Laura Thalassa. The Emperor of Evening Stars by Lauren Thalassa. Dark Harmony by Lauren Thalassa. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Better Together by Christine Riccio. Neon Gods by Katie Robert, Crier's War by Nina Varela, Iron Heart by Nina Varela, The Moonfire Bride by Sylvia Mercedes, What We Devour by Lindsay Miller, 
Blade of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller. The Starglass Girl by Sylvia Mercedes. The Sunfire King by Sylvia Mercedes. The Beast by Katie Robert. Orange Volume 1. The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. The Blood is Love by Karina Hale. It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley. Your Dad Will Do by Katie Robert. Fable by Adrian Young. Namesake by Adrian Young. Ice Planet Barbarians <laughs> by Ruby Dixon. Barbarian Alien by Ruby Dixon. Barbarian Lover by Ruby Dixon. Barbarian Mind by Ruby Dixon. Ice Planet Holiday by Ruby Dixon. Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. The Barbarian's Prize by Ruby Dixon. The Barbarian's Mate by Ruby Dixon. Ice Ice Babies by Ruby Dixon. <laughs> Barbarian's Touch by Ruby Dixon. Ice Planet Honeymoon by Ruby Dixon. Having the Barbarian Baby by Ruby Dixon. Twisted Games by Anna Huang. The Queen's Rising by Rebecca Ross. A Lady Brooks Grave Matter by Catherine Moon. Stroke of Midnight by Kay Webster. Defy the Night by Bridger. Kevinner. Prince Charming by Kay Webster. The Glass Slipper by Kay Webster. Heartless by Jade West. Soulless by Jade West. Relentless by Jade West. How We Fall Apart by Katie Shaw. The Sea Witch by Katie Robert. Forbidden Fling by Kat Taylor. A Vassal Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kemmerer. Queen Takes Rose by Katie Robert. Pump 57 by Penelope Douglas. <laughs> From Luke Off with Love by Marina Zapata. Game to be Play by Dana Islay. Flame and Starlight by Dana Islay. Gods and Monsters by Shelby Marin. Priceless by Miranda Silver. The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. The Dare by Harley LaRoe. The Play by L. Kennedy. The Dare by L. Kennedy. City of Thorns by C.N. Crossford. A Court of Honey and Ash by Shanna Mayer and Kelly St. Clair. The Savage and the Swan by Ella Fields. Radiance by Grace Draven. The Grim Rose Girls by Laura Pohl. Horrid by Katrina Leto. A Throne of Feathers and Bone by Shanna Mayer and Kelly St. Clair. Tokyo Ghoul Volume 1. Kingdom of the Wicked. Kingdom of the Cursed. The Atlas Six by... Olive Blake, Wicked Short Stories by Katie Robert, The X Hex by Erin Starling, Lola and the Millionaires Part 1 by Catherine Moon, Lola and the Millionaires Part 2 by Catherine Moon, Lake's Edge by Lindahl Clipstone, Ruins of Chaos by Amelia Hutchins, King of Crows by Loba Bray, all of these I'm just going to say the authors at the end, Zodiac Academy The Awakening, Zodiac Academy Origins of the Academy Bully, Zodiac Academy Ruthless Fate, Zodiac Academy The Reckoning, Zodiac Academy Shadow Princess, Zodiac Academy Cursed, Zodiac Academy The Big Ass Party, Zodiac Academy Faded Throne, Zodiac Academy The Awakening is Told by the Boys, all by Carolyn Peckham and Suzanne Valenti, Dipped in Holly by Dana Islay, You by Carolyn Kepnes, Gifting Me to His Best Friend by Katie Robert, My Dad's Best Friend by Katie Robert, Seducing My Guardian by Katie Robert, Best for Teen by Margaret Rogerson, Scream for Us by Molly Doyle, Melt for Us by Molly Doyle, Therapy Game, Volume 1, Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey, Monsters Naughty List by R.L. Calder, Zodiac Academy Heartless Sky by Carolyn Peckham and Suzanne Valenti, Jade Fire Gold by June Ziel Tan, Go Deep by Rilsey Adams, and finally, The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. Oh my god, <laughs> that took me like five minutes just to list all of the books. So in 2021, I definitely saw a shift in my reading tastes. I used to read mainly YA fantasy um, with some romance sprinkled in, but I really leaned heavily into the romance and the fantasy romance this year, and I find that that's the genre that I really enjoy, especially as I'm getting older. Do I hate YA now and I'm never gonna read YA? No, but I just tend to find that that's not the majority of what I read these days. You can definitely see that reflected in my top 10 books. So I will be going through the top 10 and usually my rules for the top 10 is I can have no repeat authors. And if I read a whole series in a year and I consider that whole series a favorite, I will just count that as the spot. It's coming in at number 10. We have Defy the Night by Bridget Kemmerer. I actually read this as an arc and I loved it so much I had to pick up a shiny finished copy. Look at that iridescence on the cover. I love it. Um, and then if you take off the dust jacket. Oh, so pretty. So this is a YA fantasy where we are following Tessa. She lives in this kingdom that has been ravaged by a plague and the only cure is these moonflower petals. And you can take these moonflower petals every day to stave off illness, but also you take them when you become sick with the plague. There is some inequality in the kingdom because the rich are basically hoarding these moonflower petals and they're not able to be distributed to the poor to actually get the doses that they need. So what Tessa and her best friend Wes do is they meet in this cabin in the woods at night and they go and they steal moonflower petals from the elite and distribute them to the poor. And that's the kind of like Robin Hood essence of the story until one day Wes gets caught and the unimaginable happens. Tessa is sick and tired of the kingdom and she decides that she's going to take it upon herself to do something about it, so she sneaks into the palace. Once there, she meets the king and his brother, the King's Justice, who lost their parents at a young age and feel as though ruling with an iron fist is the only way to keep the kingdom that is vastly spinning out of control with the plague under their rule. 
and things get complicated and twisty from there. I love this so much. Okay, obviously every book on this list is gonna be five stars, but I love this so much because I thought it had such a unique twist to it that I didn't see coming. <laughs> and like it just took my breath away i felt like it was really fresh and new and something i hadn't seen in ya before and i loved that yeah it was a book about the plague and you know in in equal wealth distribution which is something that's very much reflected in our real world today and i thought that the commentary on that was really good but also there's such a complex and rich political system at work and there was just a lot of depth to these characters and i'm really excited to see where this series goes tessa was a great heroine and i honestly was just blown away by this book and number nine we have a whole series and that is the bargainer series by lauren delasa which consists of rhapsodic a strange hymn and dark harmony and so basically like you can think of this as akotar but way darker so it is a fey fantasy romance and we are following calypso lilis who is a siren with a very big problem for the last seven years she's been collecting a bracelet full of black beads which represent a favor that she has been granted from the bargainer only death or repayment will fulfill the bargain everyone knows that if you need a favor the bargainer is the one that you go to he will give you anything that you want for a price and now he has come to collect his bargain with Callie. She finds him one night in her room after not hearing from him for seven years. And at first, all he asks for a repayment is a kiss. But for the bargainer, it's more than just rekindling an old romance. Something is happening in the other world. Fae warriors are going missing one by one and only the women are returned in a glass casket, a child clutched to their breasts. So if the bargainer has any hope to save his people, he needs the help of a siren. So this series was just so good. It like gave me all of the Akotar fey dark romance that I wanted, but really upped it a notch and made it really dark and a little bit taboo. And I just like loved the whole series. I binged the whole thing straight through. I thought that there was so much depth to the characters. The spicy scenes were great and I just really love this if you're looking to get into more dark romance that is similar to Akotar. Coming in at spot number eight, we have The Crown and Guild of Bones by Jennifer L. Armentrout. It still bothers me how off-center this cover is. <laughs> okay, so this is the third in the From Blood and Ash series, which if you saw my top books of 2020, From Blood and Ash topped the list. However, this year, this book is at number eight because while I did adore this book and I love the series, this is the weakest one in the series so far. I think maybe it was just a little rushed, but like obviously I still enjoyed it. Look at all of these tabs. Um, and I thought that the ending, it picked up at the end and it was just like this really explosive end and I loved it. Um, okay, so let me tell you about what From Blood and Ash is about. If you don't already know, it's like one of the most popular fantasy romance series out there today. And I think that it's getting a lot of people into the fantasy romance genre. Poppy is in her kingdom as what's known as the maiden and she cannot be seen or heard. So she has to walk around with like this white veil on her face and she's saying that she's going to be the salvation of her kingdom once she goes through her ascension and she must be kept safe until that moment but poppy wants nothing more than to be out training with the guards in order to defend her kingdom one day she gets a new bodyguard named hawk who has these alluring golden eyes and she finds that he incites an anger in her that she's never known and makes her question everything that she's ever believed in but there is a rising threat outside of the kingdom by these creatures who seek to invade and poppy and hawk must go on an adventure I love it. There's just so much more depth to the series. It's about to be six books and there's a spin-off series as well that I haven't read yet. Um, but I'm planning to do another like JLA vlog and do A Shadow in the Ember and The War of Two Queens together when those books come out because they are closely bound together, these two series. But yeah, I just like adored the series, love everything about it. Even if this book wasn't my favorite in the series, I still like had so much fun reading it. I love Poppy and Hawk together. It's just amazing. Coming in at number seven, we have a rom-com, and that is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. I adore Tessa Bailey as an author, and I definitely need to dig into her backlist, but I'm just like so sold on all of her work after reading this one, and I read Fix Her Up in 2019 and loved it, so 
I definitely definitely want to be reading all of her stuff now. So this one was just so good. It's a Schitt's Creek inspired rom-com where we have Piper Bellinger who is a famous socialite and she basically does whatever she wants in life. She goes around and she parties and the paparazzi are constantly on her heels. However, after a late night gallivant in a hotel pool illegally ends with Piper in the slammer. Her stepfather cuts her off and says that she needs to learn the value of real work. And so he cuts her off and sends her and her sister to learn some responsibility running their late father's dive bar in Westport, Washington. And Westport, Washington is a true sleepy fishing village. Piper hasn't even been in Westport for five minutes when she meets big bearded sea captain Brendan Taggart who thinks she won't last a week outside of Beverly Hills. So what if Piper can't do math? And the idea of sleeping in a shabby apartment with bunk beds gives her hives. How bad could it really be? She's determined to show her stepfather and the hot grumpy local that she's more than just a pretty face. Except it's a small town and everywhere she goes, she bumps into Brendan. The fun-loving socialite and the gruff fisherman are polar opposites, but there's an undeniable attraction simmering between them. Piper doesn't want any distractions especially for feelings for a man who sails off into the sunset for weeks at a time. Yet, as she reconnects to her past and starts to feel at home in Westport, Piper starts to wonder if the cold, glamorous life she knew is what she truly wants. So I love this. I felt like this was full of a lot of character growth for Piper because having this fun, loving socialite with a lot of money um, is not always starting off with the most relatable character, but I found that right from the beginning. Um, you could see through the exterior of the party girl to like the soft heart beneath, and I loved how she was just able to get Brendan, who's so cold, to really open up with her optimism, and I love how she tackled the project of the bar, and it was just such like a heartwarming story, lots of small town, fun fishing village stuff. I read this in like a day, and the spicy scenes are so good. Tessa Bailey does spicy scenes well. The dirty talk is always on point. On point. There was a lot of fun stuff in this and this is definitely why this is on my list. Coming in at number six, we have Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I also have the UK version because I needed both. Like they're just both so gorgeous and everything about this book is just gorgeous. So in Six Crimson Cranes, we are following Shiori, who is a princess of Kiada, and she has a secret. And her secret is that she has magic, which is forbidden. On her day of her betrothal, she loses control, which at first seems like a stroke of luck because it delays the ceremony. However, her magic is exposed and it catches the attention of Rakima, her stepmother. A sorceress in her own right, Rakima banishes Shiori, turning her brothers into cranes. Furthermore, if Shiori utters a single word, her brothers will die. Penniless, voiceless, and alone, Shiori searches for her brothers and uncovers a dark conspiracy to seize the throne. Only Shiori can set the kingdoms to right. However, to do so, she must place her trust in a paper bird, a mercurial dragon, and the very boy she fought so hard not to marry. And she must embrace the magic she's been taught her whole life to forswear, no matter the cost. This was just so lyrical and magical. I was really swept away into the kingdom of Hiada and you can really just feel Shiori's bond with her brothers and how they would really do anything to get back to one another. I was just like absolutely enchanted. It definitely read like a modern fairy tale and I do believe this is a retelling. I also love the paper bird Kiki who comes to life with Shiori's magic and the romance which there's kind of like two maybe romances going on in here i just thought it was great um like the dragon romantic interest but also the fact that shiori was like supposed to marry this guy and then later kind of turns for him turns to him for help and you know starts to feel some feelings there so i just like everything about it was just lyrical magical and beautiful coming in at number five is a whole series and that is zodiac academy if you know me zodiac academy has like become my personality so i'm not even going to take all of the books out because there's so many of them we're just going to go over to my bookshelf over here here is the stack let's get closer yes here is the stack of all of them zodiac academy tells the story of twins Tori and Darcy Vega, who are living in the mortal world in near poverty after being shuffled from foster home to foster home their whole life. Um, one day, a professor from 
comes to their apartment and says that he's from Zodiac Academy in the world of Solaria, which is a parallel world to ours, and that they must come with him because their magic is about to be awakened. So the twins follow Orion to the world of Solaria, and there they discover not only do they have magic, they have all four elements, and they are the heirs to the throne of Solaria. However, since they were brought to the mortal world as babies and their parents died shortly after, the Celestial Council has taken over the throne in the meantime with four Celestial heirs, one for each element, and these four heirs do not want to give up the throne to these girls that know nothing about their world. And so the Celestial heirs do all that they can in their power to make Tori and Darcy give up their claim to the throne and return to the mortal world. And thus, Zodiac Academy begins. And it just gets so much more crazy and in-depth than it is from the first book. I would say the first book in the series is definitely the weakest one. The writing is not as good as the rest of the series. And the storyline is a bit like, oh my god, like how are we ever going to like these guys? But if you just stick with it, there's so much character development. And you really start to understand the rules of the Fae world and how they're kind of different than the rules of our world. And it really just builds to such... An emotional conclusion um, by the time you know you get a few books in you're just like really invested in these characters and their stories and the world has just expanded so much the characters have just expanded so much and it's really taken in directions that I didn't see coming and it's just gotten like into this crazy expansive universe with a full cast of characters that I adore and I just had so much fun reading the series I read the whole thing all uh, seven books if you count the Awakening is Told by the Boys in November to December, took a little break and then read the newest book that came out late December and I just had so much fun reading it and I just really love the series because they're just so addicting and fun. Coming in at number four is The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. If you remember, this is actually the last book that I read in 2021, but it captured my heart so much. It is number four on this list. We have Catalina Martin, who desperately needs a date to her sister's wedding in Spain. Um, and especially since she has lied to her family about her American boyfriend because her ex is the best man. And she recently found out that he is engaged. Now everyone she knows will be there and eager to meet her new boyfriend. Enter Aaron Blackford, tall, handsome, condescending colleague, who surprisingly offers to step in. She'd rather refuse. Never has there been a more aggravating, blood-boiling, and insufferable man. But Catalina is desperate, and as the wedding draws nearer, Aaron looks like her best option. And she begins to realize that he may not be as terrible in the real world as he is at the office. So yes, it's like Rivals to Lovers office romance, and I adored the heck out of it. Aaron Blackford is my ideal man. You can just tell that he just like loves and cares for Catalina so much, and like... The progression of their relationship was just amazing. I was smiling throughout this whole thing. Like it just made me so warm and fuzzy inside. I loved the setting of like a Spanish wedding and it's just beautiful, amazing. Um, like I loved, love, love, love the progression of their relationship. It was just so sweet, so heartwarming. Like this book just means a lot to me and I adore it. Coming in at number three, we have Kingdom of the Curse by Carrie Maniscalco. As you can see, I had a really great time reading this. Um, lots of tabs. So, Kingdom of the Wicked, which is the first book in the series, follows Amelia de Carlo, who is a shrigge, a witch in 18th century Sicily, where she works at her parents' restaurant, and she has her twin sister, Victoria, and they do everything together. Until one day, she goes to the monastery and finds Victoria's body desecrated. She is distraught beyond belief with the death of her twin sister and she will do anything to avenge her and find the killer and that includes accidentally summoning wrath a prince of hell who says he's actually on the same page as amelia and needs to find the killer as well and so they strike a tenuous bargain in order to hunt down this killer okay so i loved the first book and then this book came out and Wow, it definitely upped this series to a new adult series and I just loved every second of it. I wouldn't say it's like so spicy because it wasn't like sexy sex scenes, you know, like full on doing everything, but just like the tension between the characters. 
the tension between them. The pining, like this, the, it was also good. This book is set in hell itself, which is a frozen icy landscape and the character development that we got, like Amelia just goes on such a journey, especially as she ha kind of has to leave her feelings about like the moral realm behind where, you know, it's like all proprietary and stuff like that because it is the 18th century and like she really just like learns like lean into her instincts and she also starts to uncover some things about her past and then it ends in this huge twist and like the relationship between Amelia and Rath just like develops so beautifully in this book and like I am just absolutely obsessed with it and I cannot wait to read the conclusion which is going to be the kingdom of the feared I feel like Amelia just really stepped into her badassery in this book and she just really became so powerful by the end and like i can't wait to see where the twists and turns take us because it went in a completely different direction like completely out of left field different direction than i thought it would like i was sh i was shook i was shook love this adore this to the end of the earth yes coming in at spot number two is a court of silver flames by sarah j mass Yes, this is a continuation of the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. Specifically, we are following Nesta's story. Nesta has a lot of trauma and PTSD from the events of the Agatar trilogy, and she is not dealing with them well. She's slipping into alcoholism and really bad coping mechanisms. And basically, Feyre and Reese and her whole family, all the inner circle, have just kind of had enough with her, and they sent her off to the Illyrian war camps in order to train to become a warrior and this is the love story between Nesta and Cassian and like I loved it it was great Sarah J Mass delivered on the spice but the main thing that's at the center of the story is Nesta's mental health journey and how she really overcomes the trauma and the PTSD because she did not have healthy coping mechanisms she was like a terror to everyone in her family and everyone hated her as a character um but I just think it's very realistic like people don't always deal with trauma in ways that make them nice sometimes it just makes them like really hardened and people that are hard to be around and i just thought that the story of like redemption and her journey to accept what had happened to her and make a new life for herself was just so beautiful and heartbreaking and of course we just had more fun fey shenanigans in the Akatar world drum roll please for spot number one and it is the love hypothesis by ali hazelwood yes this is just a light fluffy wonderful delightful story and it took my number one spot because i just couldn't stop thinking about it after i read it it's been a few months now since i read it and i still think about this book every day and i just feel like if you are sad it's just like the perfect pick me up to just make you smile and make you feel warm and fuzzy inside and that is why i love rom-coms like this so and also just like the fact that i'm a woman in stem and this is a romance that really centers on academia in stem and like it just was a setting that was really familiar to me and i just like loved it so much there was a lot of commentary on what it's like being a woman in stem and the kind of obstacles that you face and it just really meant a lot to me when a fake relationship between scientists meet the irresistible force of attraction it throws one woman's carefully calculated theories on love into chaos so olive is a third year phd candidate and she really doesn't believe in lasting romantic relationships um but her best friend does and that's what got her into the situation because on is convinced that olive is dating well on her way to happily ever after so when olive tells on that she's supposed to be on a date but she's actually in lab and she sees on she panics and kisses the first man that she sees which is none other than Adam Carlson, a young hotshot professor and a well-known ass, which is why Olive is positively floored. When Stanford's reigning lab tyrant agrees to keep her charade a secret and be her fake boyfriend. And when a big science conference goes haywire, putting Olive's career on the buds and burner, Adam surprises her again with his unyielding support. I loved it. It was just so, like, just so cute. Just so cute. And I just, like, think about it all the time because it just warms my heart. Yes, this was based on Raylo fan fiction, but obviously the fan fiction was so good that it had to be published. I love Allie Hazelwood and will be reading whatever she writes. It just it had all the good tropes, the fake dating, the grumpy sunshine. Um, just like, I just loved it. I just loved it. I loved it. I, I don't know. It just, it just makes me smile. Like, I feel like the more I love a book, the less coherent thoughts I have about it, but... This is my number one book of the year.
And there you have it. Those are my top 10 books of the year. Let me know if any of these books made your list for the top 10 as well. And leave a little science emoji that I'll put on the screen here down below if you watched all the way to the end. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like my content. And with that, have fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.